Welcome back. After I've published my last tutorial on a temp stomp fader, I received quite some feedback and decided I might do a brief follow-up. Let's uh, quickly re-establish what we've done. In the last video, we've created a sequence which um, invokes a relative circle. So if we put this up, um, the fixtures come up to full and they start to circle. And we've added a stomp fader, which when dragging it up slows down, well, it resizes the movement. And when it hits 100, it completely pauses the movement and the fixtures start to move again when I drag this back down. So this is fine and works beautifully. It has a couple of, well, I wouldn't say flaws, but it uh, has some aspects which I would like to address. Well, first of all, this only works because right now the relative circle sequence does not only contain position attributes, but also dimmer attributes. And therefore, when pulling up the stomp position sequence, which only contains position attributes, but no dimmer attributes at all, this does not switch off the relative circle sequence. The relative circle sequence continues to run. And that is why the movement restarts or comes back when I drag this back down. If the relative circle sequence would only contain position attributes, the stomp position sequence would completely override all attributes because they effectively have the exact same set of attributes and it would stop, it would off the relative circle sequence. Uh, let's demo this. Um, first we um, of everything, go to programming, take our relative circle sequence. And here you see that in the first recipe line, we apply the circle, so that's the pan tilt position attributes. And in the second recipe line, we apply um, a dimmer preset, which uh, has the dimmer attributes. And now let's delete this second recipe line. So now our relative circle sequence contains the exact same attributes as our stomp position um, sequence and let's see what happens in playback. Um, clear everything off, move this up and obviously our fixtures um, do no longer go to full. Um, I do this manually so we can actually see the circle. Good. And now if we drag up our stomp position fader, we see the circle size is decreased and completely paused when reaching 100 but it also stopped the circle sequence. So if I move this down again, we no longer see any movement. Well, that's an easy way, obviously, to fix this, so to speak. We clear everything out and we go to the relative circle sequence settings. And in here, we can switch off, off when overridden. Um, we have done this before to the stomp sequence. So if we switch this off, this means that the sequence will continue to run even if any other playback overrides all of its attributes. So we've changed that setting. Um, we move this up, pick the key armies and manually bring them to full. So the circle is back and we can slowly stomp the circle. And we see now the relative circle sequence is not stopped. It continues to run and if we drag this back down, the circle continues. So this is an easy way to fix this. However, um, what if you still want off when overwritten effectively? Because if, for example, you want to invoke a different sort of movement, you likely don't want the circle to kind of overlay the new sequence, which also contains dynamic positions. So um, there is a way to fix this, and uh, for that we can use a newly introduced feature in version 2.2, which is tags. Let me quickly demo this. We off off everything. I move this fader back down. Good. Um, and clear everything out. We go to program. Let's add a new window here, and we pick this from the pools um, section, um, and there we will find tags. Yeah, let's resize this. And restore the view. Good. So now we are going to add a tag. We call this tag X 
exclusive movers. So our idea here is that we assign this tag to all position sequences, which we want to run exclusively. In other words, if I invoke the sequence which has been tagged with exclusive movers, it should instantly kill all other sequences potentially running that have also been tagged with exclusive movers. So what we gotta do is we have to change the tag type from none to kill instant. And this is the key here. Now let's um, create a new sequence. And we label this and we call this tilt. Tilt sign. And um, in the tilt sign sequence, we pick our kill armies and we use a tilt sign relative phaser from MA Lighting's phaser pack. Beautiful. And the next thing we are going to do is we tag the relative circle and the tilt sign sequence. So we hit assign exclusive movers to relative circle, hit assign exclusive movers to tilt sign. And you can see that those sequences have been tagged by this little tag icon here in the upper right corner. And let's uh, switch to playback and put the new sequence on an executor. Good. So clear everything off, pick the key alarmies, bring them to full, launch our relative circle. Everything's fine. Um, let's do one more thing. I forgot that. Let's also deactivate off when overwritten for the tilt sign sequence. Right here. Good. Um, we can stomp the circle. It'll no longer turn off the sequence. So if we move this back down, the circle continues. And now if we start to launch the tilt sign sequence, it'll instantly kill the relative circle. You can see it here. And now we have the tilt sign relative movement. We can obviously also stomp this. It'll not stop the sequence because we have deactivated off when overwritten. Then we can go back to moving to the mover. And if we relaunch this one, it'll instantly kill the other one. So that's a great use of tags. And it kind of allows you to switch off, off when overwritten, but still kind of enforce the exact same behavior as before. There are a lot of different ways of solving problems in GrandMA. I hope this was helpful. Um, if you liked the video, if you like what I'm doing, please do subscribe. It helps um, the visibility of my channel and motivates me to continue doing this. Thanks a lot.